Our next guest has been waiting patiently and watching all of this conversation play out. Uh, China Beige Books International CEO Leland Miller. Uh, you were sort of, I could tell, making faces as uh, Eunice he was speaking. I hear that face trying to say. Well, the face is trying to say that, you know, we've known that there is going to be a baby trade deal. We've been saying this for months. But yeah, this is sort of a head scratcher. I mean, this is not even disguised as anything more than an agricultural purchases deal. But the problem is the purchases numbers don't even make sense. And the media report, there's no text yet. And when there is a text, it'll be interesting because if they're talking about a 50 billion number, is this a ramp up over two years, which is not possible? Or is it a, is it a 2020 number, which is mathematically impossible? There's no way they could do 50 they billion. They can't do these numbers. So, so, the, so the, the deal itself doesn't really have a foundation. They want to have a detente, but they don't really have a text. They don't want to make it public. They don't really know what the context. It just this is just a very so, but just, hold on, just, but, not a done deal. And do you think China is not doing this? No, I think I think, I think China is doing this because it's such a, as you would say, it's the threshold, of the bar is so low. That's exactly right. So if, why not do this? They're getting a they're getting a detente. They're buying stuff they want to buy. Uh, apparently, they don't have to publicize what they're doing, and they're not having to turn these in actual contracts. So that if they don't like what President Trump is doing, do you think doing, politically though internally they could pull this off? Oh, absolutely. But no, but one of the things that Eunice was sort of suggesting was maybe maybe they couldn't. Well, Eunice is right they're, in that there is a sensitivity. The they're putting up the complaints about this. They could very easily do it if they want to. That's right. They, 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 they are going to do it. But the, the issue that Eunice brings up, which is a good one, is that they don't like to... It you know, they're trying to talk about all this nonsense about market opening. And so it, it, it hurts their narrative to be talking about, you know, the state being directed to do this and the government directing them to do that. And it will hurt their trade relationships elsewhere. So there are issues why this isn't just easy, easy. But... If they want this done and they want this done, then it, they just order it getting done. But Leland, just looking at what's going to happen with this, when this deal is done, China's going to say, okay, they've won. President Trump is going to tweet out, this is the greatest deal that's ever been done with China. How do we actually assess that? What, uh, how, how are we supposed to figure out whether this is a good deal or not? It seems to me that a lot of it's left out. So like you mentioned, it's just agricultural. But how do we actually have any form of measurement? Well, look, the president promised that a, a trade deal would be big and robust and would cover structural reform. And people are going to be really going at this thing to make sure it's something other than a purchases deal. Uh, but you're the, saying oh, that's all it is. It's a purchases deal. Look, we don't have It's a purchases have the deal and you don't even know if they're really going to do the purchases. That's what I'm seeing right now. Now, they don't have a legal text right now, so we haven't been able to go over exactly what this says. The problem is, is that, you know, you have a deal right now, but if President Trump is being assailed as having given up things too easy and 2020 comes in and the Democratic candidate is someone who's stronger on China or trying to be stronger on China than President Trump, that we may not see a phase one deal stick into next year. This thing could be pulled back before the 2020 election. I think people are, the idea that there's a punt, the punt's going to happen. But the idea that we're going to have a detente through the 2020 election, I think that is way too early to say that that's going to happen. Meaning the tariffs could come back on it. The any tariffs point. could Meaning come the back. Agricultural purchases could disappear. There's a lot of people in right. Trump's ear that don't want a deal. Right. Is it so this goes back to the care. politics that we've been talking right. about and the, the election and, and, how, and how this kind of deal would be used or not within the sort of political process here in the United States. That's right. And this is this is not some deal that appeared out of nowhere. This is the same basic deal that they've had on the table now for months. And the U.S. side didn't like it. The U.S. side wasn't even of one mind about whether to offer rollbacks or rate reductions. So, or look, is the smarter political play to just say we're not going to impose new tariffs, but we're not going right. to roll the old but, ones but, off and don't you do what you want. Don't don't. But if they roll back the old ones, any criticism of that being part of the global slowdown, which comes here and hurts his chances in the real life. I mean, he's yeah, got a way here. If, if of, he rolls off the tariffs and they drop the agricultural purchases and don't fall well, then you go right them, back on. Then they go right back on, but then right. it impacts the market and but, the economy during as it gets closer to. But the all the people that have been, you know, just belly aching about how the tariffs are are causing no capital spending and and. Part of the reason but for the, the global slowdown, the Trump gets those of the out of the way the, before the, the election. Now, the uncertainty of the trade picture is what's causing the, the lack of capex spending, it, right. and that's not going away. No, so there, you can have a deal. I read something this that morning that said the market away. wants it, it hates uncertainty, and this removes some uncertainty. It does remove if some. No, it doesn't. If we, right. December fifteenth, we're not going up, and we're bringing we, and yeah, we're rolling so we've back eliminated some other short term, but now and we're pulling back some other ones. So people that thought that that these tariffs were hurting multinational. Then the Chinese have something that they're holding over you, and if they at that point don't go ahead 
said that the agricultural purchases, your only choice is to put the tariffs back on, and you do that at a point that's not back. the election. It's not a good deal yet. The question is, is it even a real deal? Three months right. from now, is had, this still had, a deal? We had Kevin Brady on yesterday, and he was saying it's going to be great because there's going to be intellectual property and all of these other issues that we kind of take up in it. None of that is going to get put in there. They may put the low-hanging fruit in there, but is this the structural reform that we've been talking about, putting everybody through 18 months or more of well, that was, well, it was never going to, as you said, it was never going to be in phase one. The question is whether there's really going to be a phase two if there's no, if phase one right. doesn't. Stop. There will be no phase two, and in six months there may not be a phase one. That's the big question.